This video is going to continue talking about slope, only now we're going to not be looking at a graph so much anymore, but we're just going to be focusing on two points. Now when we say finding the slope from two points, the two points just means two ordered pairs. And to do this, we're going to use something called the slope formula. We mentioned the slope formula when we were introducing slope yesterday. And because the slope formula is based on two points, we're going to start by just writing out two generic points. These points are x1, y1, and x2, y2. The subscripts of the 1 and the 2 are just to identify that they're two separate points. So it's like ordered pair number 1 and ordered pair number 2. The slope formula looks like this. We always use the letter m for slope. And then on the top, we're going to do the change in y. So you simply just subtract the two y coordinates. So we write that as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The denominator is the difference in the x's. Now you could actually reverse the order and do y1 minus y2, but then you would have to make sure that you're consistent and do x1 minus x2 on the denominator. All right, let's practice this here. Our first example, we're given the two ordered pairs, and what I always want you to start with is labeling those two points. This will just help eliminate some of the mistakes of plugging things into the formula. So we start by just writing out the formula, m equals, now we want y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 5 minus a negative 6. So you're going to have a double negative, we'll fix that in a little bit, but for now just leave it like that. On the bottom you're going to have 3 minus a negative 2. Now recall your rules for subtracting. When you have a double negative, they do cancel. So minus a negative is the same as adding. So we end up with 5 plus 6, which is 11, and 3 plus 2, which is 5. This is our final answer. I want you to leave it as an improper fraction because that very clearly gives us the rise over the run. We're going to verify this one with a graph just to connect back to what we did on the previous video. So I'd like you to graph the two points the negative 2, negative 6, and the 3, 5. We're going to start at the negative 2, negative 6, and we always do the rise first. So we're going to go up, and we're just going to count these units. And we went up 11. So thinking back to what we did before, the rise is 11. Now to get over to that next point, we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the run is 5. So just like we did before, the rise over the run is 11 fifths. Only this time, we're just doing it algebraically instead of with a graph. All right, our next example, we're going to start again by labeling the points x1, y1, and x2, y2. We're going to pop them into the formula. m equals 7 minus the negative 3 over negative 2 minus 2. On the top, we're going to cancel those double negatives again. A minus a negative becomes a plus. So in the numerator, we have 10. In the denominator, remember when you have a minus, you can do plus a negative. For some of you, that might be helpful. So it's actually negative 2 plus a negative 2, which gives us a negative 4. Now, you would not want to leave your final answer like this, because this can actually be reduced. Um, both have a factor of 2. So if you take 10 divided by 2, you get 5. And if you take negative 4 divided by 2, you get negative 2. I want to mention here, too, the negative sign can actually float. You could also say the slope is negative 5 over 2, or you could put it out in front and just say the overall fraction is negative. In fact, the last one is probably the best answer just to make the overall fraction negative. You simply, you can't put the negative sign in both spots, because if you put it in both spots, then the negative would actually cancel and you would have a positive slope. All right, example number three. Again, always start by labeling. Then we'll plug these numbers into our formula. m equals 2 minus 2 over negative 2 minus 3. In the numerator, we get 0. In the denominator, we get negative 5. Again, you cannot leave your answer like this because this fraction can be reduced. 0 divided by negative 5 is 0. So we actually have a slope of 0. Now think back to what we talked about yesterday. A slope of 0 indicates a horizontal line. So anytime you come up with a slope of 0, you automatically know it's a horizontal line. And if you were to graph these two points, you would quickly see that they did form a horizontal line. Our last example starts the same way. Label your points and then plug them into the formula. In the numerator, we have negative 2 minus the negative 4 
in the denominator, a negative 3 minus a negative 3. Lots of negatives here in this problem. I want you to cancel your double negatives in both the top and the bottom. And then when you simplify, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. And in the denominator, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. This is another fraction that can't be left looking like this. In fact, if you try to divide this out by your calculator, 2 divided by 0, you're going to get some sort of an error message. Um, you can't divide by 0, so we say that the slope is undefined. If you recall from the previous video, an undefined slope always corresponds to a vertical line. And again, if you were to just quickly plot these points, you would see that they form a vertical line.